Socket 775 prices are still cheap. Get in now while no one is looking. In a recent video, we checked out the flexibility of this platform. And today we are drilling a little bit deeper, checking out Windows 98 on such a system. I bought a new motherboard. It's a micro ADX board from Gigabyte with the G41 chipset and DDR3. So I want to find out, is this really an alternative to something like a Pentium 3 retro gaming PC. It is the G41MT S2 PT Revision 2.1 from Gigabyte. A beautiful micro ADX board, heaps of legacy features like PS2, Serial, Parallel, ID, but most importantly for Windows 98 are the two PCI slots. Two are perfect because we can use a graphics card and a nice sound card. It has ID, but the SATA ports, thanks to the Intel chipset, work really beautiful under Windows 98. DDR3 is also not an issue. We're using Windows 98 quick install today. It is patched to support larger drives and also larger amounts of RAM. On the website, it mentions ultra durable classic 4 protections, for example, for against humidity, electrostatic, power failure and high temperatures. They also mention all solid capacitors. This is nice to have USB ports that can charge your phone when the machine is turned off. Dual BIOS and a high signal to noise ratio with the onboard sound, but I'm not using that in this project. I assembled everything on a test bench, added four gigabytes of RAM, turned it on and we can hear a post beep. So it's looking pretty good. Also good is PCBWay, our channel sponsor, your one-stop shop for printed circuit boards, manufacturing and assembly, but also CNC machining, 3D printing and more. Check the video description for links and more information. If it has a BIOS, we will flash it. Well, this one, it already came with the latest F2 BIOS and on the Gigabyte website, this is the only BIOS version available. So, well, let's flash it again just to be sure. Thanks to the Windows 98 quick install project, it's installed within a few minutes with USB 2 support. Uh, copying the files, it's much faster than with an optical disk drive. Here we have the processor. It's an Intel Core 2 Duo E7600. A nice blend between having decent performance and not consuming too much power. I did downgrade the RAM to one gigabyte, no issues to report and here we also have the performance of the SSD. I'm using a Western Digital Green 240 gigabyte and stellar performance over 200 megabytes per second for reading. And what did I use for the two PCI slots? Well, firstly for the graphics, we're using the GeForce FX 5500 PCI. Beautiful video card and you can still buy this online for a very good price. And for sound, we're using the Sound Blaster Audigy 2 ZS. Interesting, at first it wouldn't get detected by the system. I've seen this before, so I used some alcohol to clean the PCI connector and then everything worked right away. I'm using Joseph's drivers. Make sure to set the sample conversion quality to high and then I also tune the mixer a little bit, uh, improving the levels and muting all the inputs for a clean audio signal. So let's have a look at some benchmarks. We're starting with stock clocks on the video card in 3 Mark 99 Max. I saw a score of 10,465, which is pretty solid. In 3D Mark 2000, just over 6,000 3D Marks. And 2001 SE also runs with a score of just over 4,000. And then I had a go at overclocking. So I cranked up the memory to 200 megahertz and that worked fine. I also set the core to 275 megahertz, which was fine. I did give it a go at 300 megahertz for the core, but here I ran into issues. So let's have a look at some results with the core running at 275 and the RAM at 200 megahertz. So here we have 3D Mark 2000. It increases to 7,269 and 3D Mark 2001 SE is now running at 4,871. So we got a nice performance boost. 
gaming benchmarks. These are time demos are next. Here we have GL Quake, very solid performance. Even up to 1280 by 1024, we're getting very playable performance. Quake 2 is next and it's a little bit more demanding than GL Quake, but not by much. Again, up to 1280 by 960, look at that 84.3 FPS. Now, a technical trivia, this video card supports 8-bit palleted textures. So in the video options, make sure you set 8-bit textures to no, otherwise you will get worse looking textures, but a little bit better performance. Here we have Quake 3, also a screenshot of the settings that I'm using for all the benchmarks. And this one is more demanding than Quake 2. So here at 1280 by 1024, we're just getting 60 FPS. So I would probably play this one at a lower resolution. Expendable is next. Here are the settings. There are settings for graphics and for sound. You also need to go into the game and access the video options and some of these settings are by default not to the highest. For example, bump mapping needs to be set to on, the shadows to projected, and I think the details out of the box are set to medium or something like that. Here are the results. Like in the previous video, the 640 by 480 option doesn't show up, but it's not a big loss. This game runs well even at higher res resolutions. 1024 by 768 I think would be a nice resolution to play this game very comfortably. Technical trivia, I'm using this Zoom edition from the Zoom digital platform. They patched the game better than GUG. Uh, it supports fast CPUs and it also has the environmental mapped bump mapping included. And here we have Draken, the Order of the Flame. Settings here on the screen for the video and the sound options. We're using EAX and again, very playable performance. This game is a little bit more demanding. Personally, I would run it at 800 by 600. I think this game looks lovely at that resolution. All the text is still easy to read. Thanks to the GeForce FX 5500, we're getting excellent anisotropic filtering with angle independent filtering working. Here we have some footage in return to Castle Wolfenstein. The main difference between the uh, GeForce FX and other view cards is that you can have the textures filtered even at angles. We can also use some anti-aliasing. Here we have Sirius Sam, the first encounter. It does a good job at cleaning up the geometry. It doesn't handle transparent texture so here you might want to have a voodoo 5 but all in all it's still a nice outcome table fog is supported here we have thief 2 running and table fog is a feature that actually quite a few games support and they look a little bit flat and dull without that feature we also have support for palleted textures not too many games use it in a way to make the games look nicer driver is one exception we can see the lights being animated and flashing whereas on other cards you will get a static image i did run into one weird issue at some point my games just wouldn't launch anymore and in driver and thief 2 I got some corrupted loading screen. I'm not sure what was going on. I reinstalled Windows onto a different SSD and then all the issues went away. So I'm not quite sure what's going on. Maybe it was the uh, 9.8 quick install image that I used, the micro version, because I tried the stock one this time. But yeah, stay tuned. This is um, the beginning of me using the quick install project in more and more of my videos. So, I'm getting experience under my belt. And today's game is Descent 3. This was actually requested by quite a few of you. This is the GOG release. It's also available on Steam. And at least the GOG release, the executable has been modified to work on modern computers. So it just doesn't run on a retro PC anymore. But there's an easy workaround. There's a 1.4 patch, which includes a clean executable. And then the game works just fine. Now, in general, I could just download the CD images, install it like that, but if there's a quick way to get a digital distribution to run on a retro PC, 
I do invest a little bit of time because then I can just copy the folders and off you go without having to muck around with images and virtual disk drives. Now there are lots of technical details uh, to do with this game before we get into actually playing it. It supports quite a few APIs, Glide, Direct, 3D and OpenGL. I studied the README file of the 1.4 patch quite carefully and it has a lot of interesting information. For example, it mentions that the OpenGL render does not support specular reflections. So yeah, I wanted to use the Direct3D API and that's what we're going with in this video. The game also supports EAX and A3D. Now, because we're using a creative card, I've enabled EAX and it sounds really lovely on the Audi G2 ZS, but I didn't get a sense of 3D positional audio over headphones. Both in Windows and the Audi G Mixer, I set everything to headphones. There's a toggle uh, called CMSS 3D. I tried that one, but really it didn't change anything. So maybe in a future video, I'll give it a go with the Oriel Vortex 2 and see if it sounds better. All in all, the game sounds lovely and it has subtle sounds and you get a bit of a heads up uh, in regards to the enemies. And there's one scene that really stands out to me. It's in the third level where you fly outside and there's rain and it has this nice environmental sound. I'll uh, put some uh, recording on the, on the screen now. For whatever reason, the game defaults to 50 FPS and in the menus it's just very laggy. The menus are also hard uh, set for 640 by 480 whereas in the game you can change the resolution. The readme file lists a lot of command line options and one of them is you can raise the FPS cap to 999. I've also enabled VSync. There's also an option for environmental mapped bump mapping but that doesn't work too well you can see the ship changes uh, the textures but then other textures are causing some issues uh, like some weird flashing sort of effect so i turned it off as for the game well i'm playing on the lowest difficulty and yeah surprising it's not difficult at all unlike some other games and oh, I maybe died once or twice, but it's not too bad. And you just respawn and then you can collect your upgrades from the location where you died. It comes with a guide bot. And this one is really nifty. Uh, you can issue commands. And one of them is to guide you to the next objective. So this is very helpful. Otherwise, I don't think I would have enjoyed this game because uh, the, the maps are huge, quite complicated. Everything is uh, like a 3D maze. And... Without the guide bot, yeah, I don't think I would have enjoyed that game. What I didn't expect are puzzles. For example, on the second level, there's some sort of a physics or timing puzzle. And that totally threw me off because I didn't expect uh, puzzles in such a game. So I had to check a Let's Play video. The game itself doesn't give any hints about puzzles or anything like that. Another one in the third level, there is a lab that you need to get into, but there are no doors and no way of entry. I looked around for ages to find some sort of a switch or toggle, but in the end you need to fire a missile to break the glass. And again, th this was uh, nowhere mentioned in the briefings, so such aspects are a little bit annoying. There is a story, it's communicated in little in-flight messages and also uh, in between the levels, but it just doesn't really hook me uh, like in other games. In a way, I feel like that I expected this to be just a, a decent shooter, uh, like Doom in 3D and have fun with that but the addition of a story and puzzles it just feels a little weird. I usually play something like Tomb Raider type games for puzzles and a, and a nice story. Still the graphics are stunning. Lots of lights, reflections, particles and again the sound is also very well done. I do want to continue playing it but maybe more because of the technical aspects. Giving a go, uh, giving the giving it a go with the Glide API, OpenGL, see if there are any differences. Also, there's our 1.5 unofficial patch. I want to see what that one brings to the table. And you can also use it as a benchmark. There's a time demo integrated, so maybe I'll add it to my benchmark portfolio.
So yeah, the game is available for a low price on GOG and Steam. Just use the 1.4 patch to get a clean executable and it will run on your retro gaming PC. If you have a 3DFX Voodoo card, make sure you delete the nglide files from the game directory and then you can play it in Glide. And yeah, I would love to hear what is your take on this game, especially any technical trivia and what sort of hardware you had back in the day. A system like this ticks many boxes. We are compatible with OpenGL and Direct3D. We can use older NVIDIA GeForce drivers. We are compatible to DirectX 9, so we can use NGLIDE, which is a wrapper and run some games in the Glide API. We have support for environmental mapped bump mapping. We have table fog, 8-bit palleted textures, really nice looking and isotropic filtering. And we can even play around with anti-aliasing. We have support for EAX, which many games take advantage of. So you will get some reverb and other environmental sound effects. The USB ports are fast. We get USB 2 speed. So booting projects like Windows 9 at quick install or copying stuff from a USB thumb drive, it happens much faster compared to a real Pentium 3. And of course, pricing and availability is much better compared to getting a vintage Pentium 2 or Pentium 3 machine. Now that, of course, it will change. I remember a few years ago, people would, you know, laugh or smirk when I said, oh, get the LGA 775. One day, this will become desirable. At the time, plenty, plenty of boards everywhere. Prices were really cheap. It will slowly change. It's just a... A matter of fact that retro prices are going up, they are getting harder to find. And yeah, it's just the nature of this hobby. So we are taking advantage of a motherboard that's quite easy to obtain, prices are low, and thanks to PCI slots, we can pick parts that are readily available. And if you wanna go high-end and use something like a Voodoo 504, there are PCI versions for those cards, you can. So the options are there. This is a fairly standard micro ATX board. Usually boards with SLI and the premium motherboards, full ATX size, those boards will go up in price first, but we don't need any of that. The main requirement is having two PCI slots and then we're good to go. And now I would love to hear from you. What is your take on Socket 775 becoming the next big thing, especially for Windows 9.8? retro PC gaming. I think the, the blend of features and performance is outstanding, what you saw in this video, but I would love to hear your take. Leave the comments down below. I do read every single comment. You might not get a reply, but I do read every single comment. And also any video suggestions or tips and tricks you have, please share them down below. And that's it for me for this one. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.